When Cunard first commenced transatlantic services, everybody who sailed on board was considered first class. The accommodation on board the early steamships wasn't luxurious by any means, but if you were wealthy enough to afford a ticket on a steamship, you would have been considered in the higher classes, particularly in the United Kingdom. By the time the great ocean liners started transiting the North Atlantic for the uh, express services, we're thinking about the, the turn of the 20th century, when uh, you had uh, ships like Lusitania and Mauritania, Cunard had developed into a three-class line. There was first class, which was the ultra-luxurious uh, accommodation at the top of the ship. And then there was a second class or second cabin, which was people who were not quite wealthy enough to afford first class, but still had uh, a higher level of disposable income than, than most. Uh, and then there was third class or steerage. And these were mainly people who were migrating between Europe and the United States, as well as Canada. Fast forward to the era after World War I and the United States imposed immigration quotas, which meant that the number of immigrants traveling on the westbound passage declined. This resulted in the emergence of tourist class, where passengers from the United States and Canada would actually travel back to Europe for holidays. Things remained like this until the Queen Elizabeth and Queen Mary came into service, and throughout the late 1940s and 1950s and into the 1960s, Cunard ships were three-class ships, first class, second class or second cabin, and tourist class. Now, when the jet airliner came into service uh, in the 1950s, particularly the Boeing 707, which completely revolutionized the way people traveled around the world, uh, Cunard had some significant strife and, and difficulties in maintaining a three-class passenger service on their ocean liners. There wasn't very much incentive, particularly in the 1960s, for passengers to travel on a ship uh, for days at a time when they could fly and get to their destination in a matter of hours. And throughout the 1960s, this became more and more of a problem for passenger shipping companies. So as Cunard started to think about what its future was going to look like in the mid-1960s, they developed plans for a new ship which would ultimately become the QE2. And the decision was made to make her a two-class ship, first class and tourist class. And like her predecessors, first class was the highest quality that you could possibly find on board passenger ships at the time. But in the tourist class areas, it was actually a step higher than what was found on the previous tourist class liners. Uh, you would actually see accommodations that included ensuite bathrooms, uh, access to swimming pools, uh, multiple eateries, and many entertainment options on board Kiwi 2. The ship was designed to be a two-class ship on the North Atlantic run, but also designed with the idea in mind that when she went cruising, she could be a single-class ship. This means that when the ship went cruising, passengers of any class could use the facilities on board the ship, with the exception of the restaurant. And it's aboard QE2 that we see the birth of the current Cunard restaurant setup. So when QE2 entered service, she had three restaurants on board. There was the Princess Grill, or the Grill Room as it was known when she first came into service the Columbia restaurant, which was also considered to be a first-class restaurant, and the Britannia restaurant, which was the restaurant for her tourist-class passengers. Throughout the history of the QE2's career, this changed many times, and by the time she retired, she had five restaurants on board. There was the prestigious Queen's Grill, which was added in the 1972 refit. This was, of course, the top-tier restaurant on board the ship. There was the Princess Grill and a twin restaurant, the Britannia Grill, both considered the Princess Grill class, and they were reserved for the high-paying passengers in that class of accommodation. There was then the Coronia restaurant, which replaced the Columbia restaurant in the 1994 refit, and this was still considered a first-class dining experience, and the cabins were appointed very nicely with window views. And then there was the Mauritania grade, which was your entry-level uh, accommodation with uh, some porthole cabins and other inside cabins, which had access to the Mauritania restaurant, which had replaced the Britannia restaurant on board QE2. So then when Cunard decided to build a new fleet of ships, starting with Queen Mary II, and then of course Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth, they decided to simplify this process further. Today, the ships have four levels of accommodation. There's the Queen's Grill restaurant, which remains the highest quality restaurant on board the ships and reserved for those paying the highest fares with the largest and most luxurious suites. The second highest grade of accommodation on board is the Princess Grill accommodation, and these passengers have access to the Princess Grill restaurant, which is a slightly less luxurious twin to the Queen's Grill, but still very highly rated. 
Most passengers who travel on board the Cunard ships will be in Britannia grade accommodation, which ranges from smaller inside cabins all the way through to quite well appointed and large balcony accommodation. And they have access to the large Britannia dining rooms. These are two tiered dining rooms with two levels. In fact, on Queen Mary 2, it's actually three levels. And the dining room has uh, two seatings, a early seating and a late seating for dinner. There is one last grade of accommodation on board the current fleet, which is the Britannia Club accommodation. And this is a slight step above the Britannia accommodation in terms of appointments and fixtures in the rooms, but has its own special restaurant that is smaller than the main Britannia restaurant and offers a more club-like atmosphere, as well as a slightly different menu. So the current Cunard fleet have those four levels of accommodation, each of which is linked to a restaurant in a unique style that was uh, established by the QE2 back in the 1960s. And one of the reasons why it works on Cunard when most other cruise lines have gone away from this kind of cabin and restaurant allocation is the Cunard formal nights. And it's such a big part of the voyage to have that luxury formal ambience on board that the restaurants become such a big part of the Cunard experience. Your dining, particularly in the evenings, is one of the main events on a Cunard cruise. So the linking of the restaurants to the cabin categories and the prestige that comes with the Queen's Grill and Princess Grill really does play into that luxury ocean liner experience and that look back into yesteryear that Cunard still trades so heavily on. So I hope that answers anyone's questions in relation to why Cunard has that interesting dining room set up. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you on board.